Hello and welcome to Amateur Hour, episode 10. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. How you doing, man? I'm feeling pretty good. We've got a lot, a lot to talk about. We actually, I'm surprised how much college football news, now that we're covering it weekly, tends to come up week after week here. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. What are you drinking there, Joey? Uh, just Mountain Dew, zero sugar. Well, zero sugar. I got you. I got you. I sent, I sent you guys a photo of this one the other day. Uh, again, shout out Barn Town because they're, they're the ones they always catch me with a really great image on mm -hmm. their can. P peanut butter and grape jelly sour. Nice. It, it, it sounds weird, but man, I, I fucking went through. Usually I get through a four pack and I'm kind of like, eh, I'm over that one. But I'm probably going to be grabbing another one of these, dude. It, it's freaking delicious. Hell yeah. Did you have the French toast one yet? Yeah. I was actually going to, once I'm done with this one, I'm going to grab one of those. And ah, it, yeah. it, it's weird. It, it was banana, pecan, French toast, sour. None of yep. those make sense, but you taste it. It's literally like in that order, step by step, the flavors. And I, I don't know. I really like sours, though. So I'm sure some people just absolutely despise it. Oh, yeah. And then, I mean, we talk about this all the time with how good Barn Town's food is, too. So go mm -hmm. out and see their beer and their food. Absolutely. So, Clark, how you doing tonight? Doing all right. How you boys doing? Good, good, good. good. So I've got, I'm drinking too. I've got a uh, cut water vodka mule. <clears throat> oh, hell yeah. Nice. Nothing's better after like an hour long nap. See, it's a little easier for us to drink on a Thursday late. We're late in the week compared to the Monday pods. I, I can't drink. I'm not stressed about anything yet, you know? You're not stressed on Monday? <laughs> hell no. Oh, I won't be this Monday. I mean, I'll be stressed on if I need to take more vacation time to go to the victory parade, you know? That's the only thing I'll be stressing about. <laughs> Wait, yeah. so did either one of you take Monday off? No. Oh, man. I've taken the day after the Super Bowl off since the Falcon Super Bowl, mm -hmm. um, and it is the most amazing thing in the world. I love it. I The way I deal with truck drivers, though, Joey, I can't really go, you have to be at work on Monday. We can't miss work because of the Super Bowl, and then I miss work. That just looks awful on my end, you know? Hey, do as I say, not as I do, man. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, so, I've never taken that day off. I, 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 I like, don't get most holidays off. I mean, it's just another day. Yeah. So. I only did it for the first one. Uh, I mean, not to sound braggy here, Joey, but once you're at your third Super Bowl, you're kind of, okay, we, we know what we're doing here, you know, when you need to take days off and stuff. So, <laughs> With that, we'll, we'll jump into the actual college sports here. Uh, this trivia question I have is actually going to be two parts here. Um, so th there's been talks this week about how Gonzaga might potentially be joining the Big 12 as a, a basketball only member so it kind of sparked this question i saw um since 2005 gonzaga has played 134 conference games at home can you guess how many wins they have out of 134 133 oh i'm at, at home yeah at home it's 133 clark what do you what do you say they're perfect 134 <laughs> Well, you're you both are a little off since 2005. They've only lost six games. They've won 128 games. Now the second they've lost six there, home games in the fucking whack or the WWCC. It's just awful. Why are they ever <laughs> ranked number one? That's freaking trash. So, <laughs> you know, clearly they win a lot at home. If you were to bet one unit on every single of uh, on Gonzaga money line on every single one of those games, how much do you think you'd be up at this point? 134 games, a yep. dollar, let's say a dollar bet for every game. How much yep. would you be up? Yeah. 50 cents. 50 cents? Joy, what would you Ooh. say? Ooh. I was going to say you'd win a dollar for every game, but. Money line. Uh, so remember, they've, they've probably right. been heavy favorites in a lot of them. Yeah. All right. I'll go. I'll just go half that you would be like $65. $65. Uh, Clark, our, uh, Clark was shockingly close. You'd be up 65 cents. <laughs> <laughs> if you bet Gonzaga money line every time in their uh, home conference game, that, that just shows you how fucking easy they're, or, or how much oh they've just been overwhelmingly favorites, you know? So that's, if, that's terrible. <laughs> does that take into account the, the ones you lost on those six games? Yeah. So you'd be down okay. those $6 then you have only 65 cents left. Still, even if they were perfect, you'd only be up $6.65? Yep, if you Good. bet $1 Fucking every game. God. 
Wow. I'm glad you said one dollar. I made the math really easy in my head here. So, but we'll uh we'll jump into it because we do have quite a few you know college football and college basketball things to get to. Now we got we got some actually big news in college football that's coming up. I mean the biggest news coming out of Iowa City, uh they're playing at Wrigley Field versus North Northwestern this season. Joey, you pumped for it? That's the biggest news. Yeah. I didn't even know it until I read the agenda. <laughs> I wouldn't start with that. I mean. When you have a game like that, do you guys have any inkling if, you know, Kansas were going to play Missouri at, like, Arrowhead or something? Or, like, this game, they're playing at Wrigley. When they play at these offsides, does that encourage you to go to the game even more? Or is it, does it really matter to you guys? I don't I don't say that it matters. Is it cool? Is it kind of a cool event? Mm-hmm. I think it does increase the coolness. I mean, it's better than just an away game at Northwestern, for sure. Then playing at Wrigley... It's just the whole environment. It's it's going to be a cool environment. I might check it out on TV, see what it looks like. That's mm-hmm. for sure. But mm-hmm. am I going to go? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, if I lived in Iowa City, I would probably try and make the trek over to this. I I like going to as many of the away games that are you know within a few hours that I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for most of the Big Ten teams, like. Playing at offsite, you know, neutral stadium type things. It, it is what it is. It's 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 cool, but it's not like a trip to go to. Mm-hmm. But because Northwestern Stadium is so freaking terrible, yes, this is one to go to. If you want to go to a nice stadium and watch Iowa play Northwestern, probably go to Wrigley. But if you want to go to a terrible stadium and watch Iowa play Northwestern, go to their normal games. Mm-hmm. That takes me to my next question. Is this because Northwestern's remodeling or redoing their football stadium? Is that why they're playing it? a weird site i would assume so because it's late in the year isn't it like november 4th oh i don't know i'd have to look but i know they are doing like a small remodel this year because when i was there last year excuse me they had billboards and stuff up they're building a whole new complex off yeah. site so yeah That's... as soon as yeah this one i don't think they're going to put a whole lot of time and effort into the stadium they're in right now um it may be time to start tearing that one down though you might be right i don't know I thought I had seen some uh, concept art or whatever about the new one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't think they've broke ground on that yet. So I don't think that they would be moving stadiums or anything like that. So maybe it is a small remodel. It's probably more of just a, a gimmick, knowing that there's a ton of Iowa fam- people that are from Chicago that go to Iowa type of thing. I, they're probably going, where can we get all these drunkards? We're just next to the alcohol, and they go Wrigley, Wrigleyville. Let's just get them right over there. And <laughs> because, so if you've ever been to a Northwestern game, Brian, did you ever go with us? No, I okay. didn't. I couldn't remember. Um, you have to go li- literally miles to find alcohol. It is atrocious. If you don't bring your own to tailgate, like mm. if you want to leave at halftime and go get a beer, it's miles. Like you have to get in like a fifty dollar Uber ride to go to a bar. It sucks. So if you're already in Wrigleyville drinking, mm-hmm. just go. Yeah, it, the, it makes sense for them to be playing all their games at Wrigleyville, to now, be honest with you. Second question. Do they have metal detectors to find your flask? Ooh. Uh, I don't know. I've never been to Wrigleyville. Or Wrigley oh, Field. Oh, no. I was talking about Northwestern. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't even know if they checked purses. Yeah. So, so I. By the way, I did look up their schedule. They might, if they do something with the Purdue game, then maybe they do because the last four games are. It was supposed to be, ver, yeah, home versus Iowa, at Wisconsin versus Purdue, and then at Illinois. So, I mean, if they do something for the Purdue game, maybe, maybe they are starting to break ground a, a, like a, a month earlier or so. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't say I. I just thought that one was interesting that playing at Wrigley and. I think I put up on the a poll on on our uh, Twitter at Heartland Pulse, and uh, yeah, it was it was like fifty five percent. It didn't gauge their interest on actually going to the Northwestern game. You know, I don't even know how many people actually know about this. Like, I until I saw it on the agenda tonight, I didn't know about it. Got to keep up on the Iowa Twitter, my friend. Oh well, go, moving on to the next topic, I have been keeping up on the Iowa Twitter, and that's probably why. No one else knows about this because of the stupid, stupid fucking contract that they just gave Brian Ferentz. Uh, I'm sorry. This is going to be me ranting for a second because you Chiefs fans have had the whole rest of the week to rant, but I'm going to go off on this. The stipulations for the contract are seven wins 
and at least 25 points a game. Yeah. Seven wins is bullshit. If you listen to what I talked about before on this podcast and then also read my blog, for me, that's not, that should even be fucking bowl eligible. So that is mm-hmm. stupid no. and a terrible, terrible. But he's taking a pay cut, Joey. He's losing $50,000 yeah. a year. Whatever. If he meets these stipulations, then he makes $925,000 plus bonuses yeah. on top of that for making bowl games and having all Americans and shit like that. Yeah. He's going to be able to make more money on this. And the reason is those 25 points per game are not stipulated to offense only. Yep. Are you oh. fucking <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> I. You are tying in something to someone's contract that one, they have no control over yeah. and two is benefiting from the whole another half of the fucking team. Like that Iowa defense is going to score points. We know this. They've done it year in and year out and yeah. they just got another vastly improved, amazing athletic linebacker from uh university of Virginia as a transfer. They're going to score more points this year. And then you put on top of that, um, any safeties, any field goals, any shit like that, that the offense doesn't even have to score touchdowns in, and he's still going to probably get paid. Just so everyone knows, 82 teams last year scored 25 points per game. 85, no, 85 scored more than 25 points per game. Yeah. 82 made the play or made the bowl games. So basically, has to make a bowl game. If you want to know how good their offense has to be, they have to be as good as number 85 Arkansas State. Which is still 33 points higher than we were last year. So, yeah. yeah. It is it is the biggest crock of shit I've ever seen for holding someone accountable. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't even really want to keep going on this because it just pisses me even more off. So. Well, hey, Joey. I got, yeah. I got yeah. a question for you. Who, yeah. who is Brian Ferentz? Uh, <laughs> Kirk Ferentz's son. Oh, the, the head coach's son? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, remember, though, Clark, that Kirk isn't his boss. Gary Bart is his boss. So, really, right. it's fine. Yeah, and Gary Bart is Kirk Ferentz's biggest lover. We all know this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, I, I know why this happened. It's just disappointing and a sad day for Hawkeye sports when that type of bullshit still going on. I hate it. I, I agree with you. If, if you're going, hey, hey, Iowa – you know, if I'm the coach, co- I've been there for a quarter of a century now. Hey, guys, I built this prestige of winning eight plus wins a game every year. This next year, we're going to go to the next level. We're going to have an offense just as good as Arkansas State. I, I, those two should not be in the same conversation, man. I wish we'd be talking about, hey, we need to get to the levels of, I'm, I'm not going to say LSU. I'm, I'm trying to, like, <clears throat> you know, national powers that are higher up there. We need to be to Penn State's level. We need to be to yeah. USC's Michigan. level. You know, yeah. exactly. That's what you should be striving for. You shouldn't be striving for not even middle of the road. That That is below average. Congrats. We're as good as Arkansas State. Right. Yeah. Just terrible. It's man. so stupid. I heard you guys talk about it a little bit last night, too, on the uh, uh, Road <laughs> to Super Bowl podcast. Yeah. And I, I didn't take just – for the record, I didn't take offense to anything you guys are saying because I still think it's bullshit and it's stupid. And obviously, I'm ragging on this shit too. Yeah. Um, but bringing up, I can't remember who it was brought up that uh, basically, oh shit, I can't remember even what you said now. Well, train of thought just ran off the track. So well, I, I mean, honestly, idea. you're just so frustrated with this whole thing, and and I get it. You, you know, I think it's like like we've mentioned before. I think it's just frustrating where you see Iowa State. Hey, you weren't good enough. You're just out. It's just you're just not here anymore. We're making the changes. Your biggest rivals doing that. You're seeing other teams, the Big Ten, making those changes, and then you're seeing, like you said, it's just a lame excuse to keep his son for at least another year. And then if he hits it, then they go, see, you know, he's hitting the goals that we set, the the bottom of the barrel goals that we we set for him. I mean, yep. Oh yeah, that's what it was. One you brought up that you know with that defense and stuff, they're a playoff team. More than likely, if they score twenty five points a game, that was your. Sterling. That's not even. That's not going to happen because of Brian Ferentz, and yeah. it's so disappointing. I but think Phil whatever. Parker, I think Phil Parker deserves, um, you know, just proportional to the points that he scores, he gets a proportion of that bonus that Brian gets. I think it's like or fair. I don't know. Every time that defense scores, it should be a hundred thousand dollars away from Brian Ferentz and 
what they should do is just make it even. They it between the two of them, they get paid yeah. one point nine million, depending on how the defenses are rated and the offenses are rated, is who gets paid what. For like in Iowa State, it would be ninety percent goes to the offensive production and ten percent for the defense. Iowa, you're pretty much even on both offense and defense, man. Just... Yeah, shit. By the end of the year, Brian Ferentz will be making what I make. I mean, he'll be in the poorhouse. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get him a PPP loan, don't you worry. Yeah, so. Exactly. But we'll, we'll move on, Joey, just so you don't get, get even more worked up on this, because we've actually got some good news, at least on the Big 12 side. Yes. Uh, Oklahoma and Texas, this broke within the last two hours, but Oklahoma and Texas have been granted early, access, or early exit out of the Big 12 here. Now, this is an immediate. I would say they are going to be playing in the SEC in the fall of 2024 because we've already scheduled the Big 12 games. Um, so I would say that is going to, you know, it's going to be nice, honestly, to get one more go ahead in the Big 12. But we're going to uh, we're going to play in the SEC in 2024. Each of the legacy legacy schools is going to split a hundred million dollars, so each school gets about 12 and a half million. And then it sounds like there's more to come with the actual games of, uh, like, SEC scheduling in the future. Um, you know, Fox will – then there's some network stuff. Like, Fox will get games that ESPN's supposed to get because they're losing profit in their deal with the Big 12 by losing two Blue Bloods. Let's just be honest of what it is. Um, but I'll be honest, man, as a Big 12 fan, I'm excited for it. No one has wanted OU in Texas there since they've stabbed us in the back. Oh, OU in Texas, they don't want to be there anymore. They want to get out of the, you know, the little leagues, and they want to go to the big leagues. I think this is just a win-win for everyone. I agree. I think that you hit the nail right on the head with them wanting to be out of there, and you guys not, not. I don't want to say butt hurt, but the rest of the Big Twelve kind of just getting backstabbed by them to leave to go somewhere else. So I think yeah. it's a good thing for both of them just to, you know, cut ties and move on, and it just make it a nice, easy breakup for everybody. I think the best analogy I just came up before we started here, this reminds me of the Chiefs and Tyreek Hill. We couldn't find a middle ground. Clearly, let's be real honest. When he was here, Tyreek did not want to be here. He made it very clear with not signing our contracts and everything. I don't want to be here. The Chiefs, frankly, if you don't want to be here, we don't want you here. And we're just trying to get the most out of this deal. You know, they are only leaving one year earlier. But, again, $12 million for Iowa State when our – I, say, I think right now our annual uh, uh, media rights is around twenty million. I mean, we're getting a sizable chunk just up front simply from them leaving, and then now, frankly, from from all of our standpoints, now there isn't the the blue bloods hanging over us. Now we can just okay, we're going to move on fresh. You know, now we have a new Cincinnati that's coming in. We have the opportunity where you know, like for an Iowa State that has never dominated the, this you know conference. Maybe we can jump in. Maybe Cincinnati or BYU or UCF, Houston, one of these schools can jump in, and and it's anyone's conference now. Big Ten, you know, mm-hmm. the Big Ten, it's Ohio State, Michigan. Let's be honest. The SEC mm-hmm. right now, it's Georgia and Alabama until someone does something different, it, which is kind of funny. LSU has won in the last five years. You know, they can be in the conversation too, but we have these blue bloods now. Big Twelve seems like the one conference where it's wide freaking open. Yeah, I guess who do you, would you even say is the new conference blue blood there? Like, who's probably won the most? Uh, Oklahoma State. Um, for first football, football goes, yeah. Kansas State probably. Kansas State, Baylor, Oklahoma State are probably going to be the the key ones right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's KU. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Rock shock. Kid gets one six win season, and all of a sudden he can't fit through doorways with that big old. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, technically, uh, yeah, I mean, Cincinnati would be the only one that's made the playoff in that conference now. Kansas yeah. State, what? Yeah, no, TCU. You, Jesus, I'm an idiot. I was gonna say. Well, I was trying to think like way back. I mean, UCF has their fake national championship, so they've been undefeated. <laughs> Didn't make um, a playoff though. No, did not make a playoff. Let's just remember that they did not make a playoff because they their mm-hmm. heads are getting a little big too. But I don't know, man. I'm pumped. I, I it was just it was just gonna be an ugly breakup, anyways. I think the Big Twelve got it. Honestly, not only getting those two out, I think this opens up the, the way your Mark, Mark has started. He's renegotiated our TV media deal. He's now gotten the two backstabbers out of the conference. 
I think he's going to start expanding, man. I think he's legit with what I'm hearing about the Pac-12. They can't come to a media rights deal because the Big 12, let, let's be real honest, it's SEC, Big 10, that are the big dogs. And then right now you kind of have this wavering of ACC has their contract until 36, and I don't know when they can renegotiate. Big 12 jumped in and set the market price for the next tier down as high as it will be. No one's going to overpay the Pac-12 that hasn't been in the playoffs in six years because football makes money. They're not going to overpay for the Pac-12 when they're already paying a certain amount for to the Big 10 that actually has been competing in, in these playoffs at least. So, mm-hmm. And with the Pac-12, who, who are the teams that are competing in the playoffs? Washington, that one-off year, and then – USC is always the contender and UCLA and they're leaving. So, I mean, the, the PAC 12 is, I think realistically going to be what everyone thought the big 12 is going to be, was going to be around this time. And it's a, you know, a conference scrambling to try and pick up SMU in, in uh, San Diego state. I mean, that, that reeks of desperation, dude. Oh yeah. So, I don't know. I, I would say I, I think it's going to be a good thing. It'll be interesting to see how this continues to break down, though. Yeah, I, and like I said, I'm, I'm glad for the Big 12. I just hope that the teams that come in uh, elevate them so they're competing and it's a three-dog race and people get in the playoffs and stuff. That's what I want. So. Mm-hmm. I, I think they will. I would say if, for football-wise, BYU has always played a, a tougher-than-average schedule. You know, because they're playing, you know, Arkansas randomly. They'll have their cupcakes as well, but they have done well the last few years with um, with their scheduling. UCF, I, I mean, I think they're stable enough. I think they, they went to a bowl game. Mm-hmm. They're, they're going to be just fine. Houston, I mean, they lost to Kansas last year. What kind of fucking team loses to Kansas? <laughs> and uh, fucking what? It's, oh, so, you know, the rough one was we were hoping Luke Fickle would join and Cincinnati would be right there. Then he leaves for Wisconsin. Now all of a sudden you're going, yeah, since he was in the playoffs or uh, in the playoffs two years ago, but what are they going to be now? So, well, it'll just be easier for Matt Campbell to go over to Cincinnati and be oh, their head yeah. coach. So, easier ah. for, for Iowa State to win the Big 12. We're going to the playoffs this year. 100 deckers all the way. Big deck energy. That's all I'm going to say. Big deck. I yeah. love it. Big Decker's energy. Um, yep. But yeah, and we'll... we'll was that? Nothing. I was just oh. going to say Brock Purdy's nickname. but Ooh, Big Cock Brock. I'll say it for That's you. That's right. There. So, well, we'll jump into some uh, uh, basketball here. Uh, so just for our Heartland teams, Kansas is at nine, so they went down one of the rankings. Iowa State, even with the loss last week, they went up two in the rankings. They're at 11 right now. Uh, Kansas State went down five spots. They're at 12. And then Iowa was starting to get some votes, so they're actually, quote-unquote, ranked, but they're at 36 right now with their total votes. So mm-hmm. all our teams are, are doing pretty good right now. Mm-hmm. So yep. we'll, we'll, I would say we'll, uh, we'll kind of go. Oh, actually, shit, Trent is joining in right now. Trent, before we move into basketball completely, how are you feeling about Texas and Oklahoma um, leaving for the uh, SEC a year early? Good. <laughs> <laughs> feeling great another big 12 fan that's satisfied so what's the weather like ollie <laughs> yeah. 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 if they could leave earlier that'd be even better <laughs> well it's got to be it's got to be one year at least so but we'll jump into basketball here iowa 15 and 9 right now they they dropped to seventh because they did get a, a close win versus illinois but just tonight, they lost to Purdue, 87-73. I mean, there, there's no answer for that, ED dude. How, how do you stop a, a 6-4 uh, center that doesn't foul anyone? Or, I'm sorry, 7-4. That, yeah. Mm-hmm. A 6-4 center, what is this, 1A yes. Iowa basketball? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I I guess I learned tonight that Arizona has two uh, twin towers, basically. that are both 6-11 and 7-foot. How do they have any losses? I mean, if you have two seven footers basically on your team well, running up and down the court, I mean that that's crazy. All but at one time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean they're they're both on there right now. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, Purdue. I watched till halftime of that game, and they were down seventeen. So then I decided to take a nap before the podcast instead. Um, and I was watching the women's game at the same time, and they ended up losing eighty-seven seventy-eight. 
Um, mm-hmm. And they were playing number two, Indiana. And while I started watching them, Caitlin Clark missed like three out of five shots. I was like, nope, turning this off. I'm bad juju. So, yeah. But no, I will. I mean, they've looked good. Uh, they're going to make the tournament. They got 15 wins. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Nice. Oh, this is done. Um, what do you think about their upcoming schedule? They got to play at Minnesota and at Ohio, at Ohio State in the next week. Think they go two and zero? What what are you thinking? Yeah, I think so. I think there's a really scrappy and good team. Um, they're the highest scoring offense in the Big Ten, so I think they can play with anybody. I mean, Purdue is probably going to outpace them every time they do play them because they just can't stop anything. But the rest of the teams in the Big Ten, I mean, I think they can play with. I don't know if they necessarily beat them all the time. But, yeah, I think they go 2-0 against Minnesota, Ohio State. And then Northwestern with that big matchup that got postponed earlier. Um, we'll see what comes out of that one. But I think they win that one as well. Nice. Well, and again, they, they finally got McCaffrey back. He has been, he's been playing well. And, you know, with the Big Ten, it's, it's not going to hurt you too bad if you have a couple losses. I mean, it, they mm-hmm. are, you know, they're still a legit ba- basketball conference. So, you know, yep. it is what it is on that side. I was, I'm trying to find who. Uh, do you some may say it's the best conference in the nation. But, uh, well, but. some people are really wrong. Uh, also, sport? Ohio. Yeah. If you're Basketball. talking wrestling, then you're right. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Uh, speaking <laughs> of Iowa Hawkeye basketball news, uh, Keegan Murray uh, set the rookie record for the Sacramento Kings three pointers already this season with 130. Before the All-Star break. So, Kings are like third in the West, baby. Nice. nice. They yeah. still got Deer and Fox. They do. And uh, Sabonis. So, yeah, that, that team is young and pretty loaded with talent. Is a uh, Woogie cousin still there? I'm trying to think of anyone <laughs> no. that's been on that team. <laughs> Peja Stoyakovich, Chris yeah, Webber, yeah. Mike Bibby. <laughs> Mike, Mike Bibby, yeah. That was probably going to be the only other one I could I could think of. You well, know, white, I remember white who, chocolate. Who's yeah, white chocolate. Yeah, Jason Williams, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. So uh, the the one thing I did uh, kind of like it before we move on from like Big Ten basketball. So um, I can't remember who Purdue lost to uh, a couple days ago. Oh, it was uh, Indiana. Indiana. Yep. I loved it as much as I'd like to kind of shit on Edie for being a you know seven four monster out there. I love there. There was a press conference when they lost, and it was like, you know, it was a. I think it was a one possession game. Give me one second. Yeah, Indiana won seventy nine seventy four. So it was probably some free throws in there. The one of the uh, reporters was just was just like roasting his point guard and tell like, why did you make this mistake and kind of pressuring him? And the kid gave a pretty solid answer, going, "Hey, you know, I just missed it, you know, and yada yada yada." It, Edie immediately took the microphone. He goes, hey, in a big game like this, every single mistake is, you know, it, it def- affects the outcome of the game. He goes, I was missing free throws. I was doing all this. I, I, I don't know. That, that's what a leader does. He jumps in and he tells you, hey, we all, you know, this isn't the last play that gets all the attention. It was me missing four free throws or missing a critical block and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's what you want to see from your lead players. I mean, stepping mm-hmm. right up like that. I, no, it, it, honestly, this this Purdue team is scary good, just amazing. So, yep, yeah. And I don't know who their uh, small forward is, but that is one good looking motherfucker, man. He is a good looking <laughs> dude. Holy shit! I saw him tonight on the TV. I was like, that's a pretty man. Like that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> did you lost his eyes or something? Yeah, it, 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 I did for a second. I was like, holy shit! Uh, but also. If you watch that video of Edie making that statement and stuff, his arms are so freaking long. I thought they were like trying to take the mic away from the point guard, like someone off stage. No, yeah. it's just him. And then the camera has to pan, like, whoa. <laughs> it, that was pretty funny. Yeah, you, you ever see like in the old timey, like either talent shows when they're like trying to pull someone off stage, it's just that big old cane comes out from the backstage yep. and yanks them. That's just Edie's arm. Just pulling him That's out of the exactly way. Exactly what it looked like. If you're out there and on Twitter, check that baby out, man. Oh, he can do the Michael Jordan dunk from half court, yeah, like yeah. on Space Jam, mm-hmm. but in real life. Yeah, that, that, that's just his normal stretching right there. <laughs> uh-huh. the, also, with Edie, he's averaging 2.2 blocks a game and only 1.7 personal fouls a game. I, I mean, this kid's just an animal, man. 
Thank God he doesn't play for Iowa State at West Virginia. There it is. Let's jump into it. Iowa State. They had a uh, well. They had a solid weekend. They beat Kansas sixty-eight fifty-three and just throttled them in Hilton. And then they went to Morgantown. And they lost seventy-six to seventy-one here. Did you um, hear that? Did... Dude, that was another whistle. A ref what? just called another foul. Oh, damn in this it game. again! Again. Uh, was that foul number fifty? Then that was yeah. fifty-one. There was fifty fouls. I'll count as forty-nine. Iowa State had 31. West Virginia had 19. Uh, the box score must have been wrong. That's what I don't know. Maybe hell, I could be wrong. That's what it said last night when I looked. So let me see here. I'm, I'm I got to get all my stats pulled up here. So I uh, say let's just jump into West Virginia. On, honestly, with how good of a game that we played in Allen Fieldhouse, it doesn't even shock me that we did play that well versus Kansas. We were amped, and we rise to the occasion when we're playing teams. And then when we're playing teams that are lesser in our conference, we shit the bed. Texas Tech. Now we got West Virginia. I'm sure there's one. Oklahoma like, oh, State. Oklahoma State. We rise to the occasion. We play to their level every single time. Now, I don't know how we dictate playing to the referee's level. But, and by the way, I've said it on a few of our podcasts. Complaining about officiating is loser talk. Yes, this is official Cyclone loser talk. Main trend about to go off here. Trent, you just want to go first? I'll say so I don't no. break up your heater anymore. I don't think it's loser talk. Um, I know there was a discrepancy in the number of fouls, 31 to 19. Yep. But that game was terribly officiated both ways. Yeah. F- when you have to call a foul, what, every 45 seconds? That is insane. Uh, I know I mentioned to you the tweet last night. Um and I think you saved it, but yeah. Iowa State fouled on 31 of West Virginia's 69 possessions. Come 45% on. 45% of the time, there was a foul on a possession. That, And that was just Iowa State. So if you add West Virginia's in there, it's going to be even higher. It just – I, I mean, just some of the soft calls, like mm-hmm. Oshun Oshuni's foul out. Mm-hmm. The ref – had it was on a f- missed free throw the ref blew the whistle before the ball was even rebounded yeah 90 feet away from the other basket to foul out Iowa State's player mm-hmm. uh, just it, it, everything about it was just it was just a terrible game like these teams are both physical both great at defense mm-hmm. let them play the refs are like nope this is about us. <laughs> that it was that was what felt like was just a ref show because when you have two teams that are playing hard, let let them play hard. If one team like because Iowa State, I've always said when we're playing that hard defense, if you're playing certain competition, they're going to call because you can't just go ham like that out of all the mm-hmm. time. But when both teams are doing that, you know, let alone both teams are playing hard, and then there's that big of a discrepancy. That's just bullshit, man. Uh, and, and that's how West Virginia has played that tough defense for the last decade yeah have they had three players foul out in a game probably not they had and then two other two others with four fouls probably not yeah see that i mean that's a full lineup that's almost fouled out dude yeah um there were iowa state had five fouls called for them in a 35 second span between it was between the 17 and 16 minute mark how that's every seven seconds there's a foul man West Virginia was in the bonus. They might have been in the double bonus before yeah. the under 16 minute media timeout. In the first four minutes mm-hmm. of the second half, West Virginia was in the bonus. God damn. I fell out in an eighth grade basketball game in two minutes because Mr. Nice Winger kept me in. That's crazy. Dude, these yeah. refs last night would have hated you. Oh, yeah. Uh, to put it in perspective, the Iowa Purdue game, Purdue had two fouls in a half. The whole game. Or in the whole it's half. Insane. Just the yep. cleanest team in the country. Just a, a bunch of hardworking guys over there. <laughs> well, um, Iowa only had three, so it's not like it was just one-sided. I would rather watch that. Like, both mm-hmm. teams, even if they're hacking the shit out of each other, it's not being yeah. called both ways. <laughs> Who cares? Let them play. Yeah. In, in the last three conference road losses, Iowa State has been called for 81 fouls. The opponent has been called for 46 fouls. 
Yeah. They have had 96 free throw attempts compared to our 57. And last night, dictated by five. Oklahoma State dictated by two, I think. Two to five. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember. uh, Texas Tech won in overtime by three, I think. So when they get 40 extra free throws and and the winning total uh, is by seven. Yeah. It's seven over those three games. Well, actually, Iowa State has lost four road conference games by seven total points. Yeah. Oof. So, again, like, uh, that's where it's like, yeah, we can yeah. whine and bitch about it. These aren't going to be hur- hurting losses. I- I'll be no. honest. Keep, keep us away from the two and three seed. We we know what happens when Iowa State's in those seeds. Let's just get us to a four, but not get us down to an eight. You know, let's, let's have something four to seven. Yeah, and it's just, you know, make a play here or there. Make a shot. Make your free throws. Iowa State wins those games. Whatever. It is what it is. But – I'm not complaining about the officiating against Iowa State. It's that was unwatchable basketball. Yeah. That game took what was it, two hours and, two and 40 and minutes? Hours. Yeah. Whoa. What? Yeah. A college basketball should be under two hours. Yeah. yeah. It was Holy like two hours shit. and 40 minutes. So that's, that's terrible. Iowa plays football games and under that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You are correct. Um, th- this tweet obviously came out before the game was over, but it's, it, uh, it was at a, it was Chris Aringa that tweeted out. They see he said thirty fouls. We actually ended with thirty one. The only time Iowa State has been called for more in a Big Twelve game was a four overtime game at Missouri and a one overtime game at Oklahoma State, both in two thousand one. I mean, he had to play basically a whole other game in order to get as many fouls, and that was 22 years ago. Jesus. Historically, yeah, it was bad refereeing. Un- unwatchable basketball game. So, the good thing is, is the Big 12 basketball is SEC football, so losses really don't fucking matter. Where We're still yep. going to get the treatment we deserve, in my opinion. Um, we upcoming- deserve. We deserve. We <laughs> <laughs> like that. Um, we get we get two home games now. We get some home cooking of our own. We get we can get revenge versus Oklahoma State, and then we're going to play a tough TCU team that you know after the three was made in their face. I think they're going to come to Hilton with a vengeance. But yeah. again, undefeated in Hilton, I re, without a shadow of doubt, I think we're two and zero. I think after we've just been our ass by the referees, I think we're going to come come out focused and ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I think Iowa State has a legit chance of going undefeated at home this year. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the sweet spot for your Iowa State season would be win enough games that you get a good seed in the Big 12 tournament, win the Big 12 tournament, but you're still a four seed, right? I say win the Big 12 regular season. Hmm? Yeah. I'll be honest, win the Big 12 regular season, lose the first game of the Big 12 uh, tournament so we can rest up for the NCAA tournament, so we can make our national championship run. 1 to 50 odds right now for Iowa State, and I might put the house on it. (laughs) <laughs> TJ made the Sweet 16 with, with a uh, with not the greatest team, lost pieces, and now we're better than ever. So yeah, man. don't doubt the man. He he wears. Speed. I saw. I saw the bracketology last night. KU is still a two seed. Yeah, I don't get it. Their their logo is still a Jayhawk. So I mean, of yeah. course they're going to get treatment. They are reigning national champions. Yeah. yeah. Put some respect on it. Does that make him a two seed this year? I, it I gives know. you an extra seed. I don't care what okay. it is. It <laughs> Gonzaga's <laughs> probably a one seed still, and they're ranked 15th yeah. with five losses. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Five losses in that power conference they play in. Woo. Well, yeah. Well, I would say we'll jump to Kansas there. I mean, they're 19-5 right now. They're also one of the many teams tied for second in the Big 12 with Iowa State. I think Texas, Texas is one right now, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we uh, gave him a knock on the chin in the last game. So yes, sir, helping did, the group out. I would say, well, that, did you did you watch both these games? They well, they lost to Iowa State, and then they did beat Texas at home. Did, did you catch either of those games? Uh, no, but it's pretty much following what I've thought this team is, <clears throat> and that's young and yep. inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's what it boils down to. Uh, your favorite guy, Big Grady Dick was a <laughs> scoring leader for the Texas Longhorns game. So I'm honestly, I saw, I saw the scorecard for that one. And, and my wife's like, did you, do you think 
if I told you Jalen Wilson only scored two points that they would win the game, I'm like, hell no. He he's their he's their star. He's the guy that should be out there scoring 20 points every game. Yeah, he put up two points. Big Gertie Dick, he came through, he had 21. Uh they shot the ball very well in Texas. So or against now, Texas. Couple a couple <laughs> things about Grady Dick. One, I've sent you guys a couple TikToks of him doing TikTok dances. Clark, does that change your opinion on anything about him? No. He Okay. Dude, he's 18. He's yeah. in that generation where he's doing <laughs> dumb stuff on TikTok. It, it is kind of funny seeing this kid that's like like six seven or whatever, big old lanky bastard doing like some Fortnite dance and shit. I, I got a, a good chuckle out of that. He, um, I think he's, just, he's a goofy James. kid from Bel Air, Kansas, man. Like what? What more? Like you can't hate him. He's just a goofy kid. Mm -hmm. No, I'll, this is maybe one of the first years where I I watched Kansas. I go. Like, there's not one person I hate. Like, I, I always hated Perry Alice. You, you know, it was just something about his face that made me want to punch him. Old as shit, you know. But, but you know, this year is just kind of like, okay, yeah, they're reigning national champions. You can tell, like you said, you can tell they're young. They're just a raw team, but they're slowly picking up steam. They are currently, I, I got it pulled up here. So Texas is leading the Big 12 at 8-3. and three. You have four teams that are tied for second at Kansas State, Kansas, Baylor, and Iowa State. I think Baylor's sneaky going to steal the Big 12 here. Out of nowhere, I don't, when we got there, dead now. I don't think there's going to be a winner of the Big 12. I think everybody's just going to tie for second. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have like like the gold medal that for who gets first place, and they're just going to cut it six different ways and just hand it out to everyone. <laughs> there's not going to be one seed at the Big 12 tournament. They're all just going to be two seeds. Six buys, and they're just going to win yeah. for bottom four teams you passed out. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, what was it? Oh, so a couple of you have daughters. Uh, I saw this video. This is probably a couple weeks ago, but it was so funny. The camera work because ESPN had a cut for it from it right away. It's kind of going across like the benches and like the uh, like it was like free throws, and it cut to this girl that was wearing a shirt that says "I love Dick" on it for crazy. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel if that was your daughter? You're watching. Oh, my daughter goes to school there. Oh, and there she wearing a shirt that says "I love Dick." <laughs> If I were him and I was an 18 year old with his name, I would make my nickname Grade A. Grade A. Grade a. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also I mean, to touch back on Purdue's pretty guy, his name is Mason Gillis. Look him up. Mason Gillis. Okay. Well, I mean, you can't say that. And then, of course, we're gonna have to look it up here. Ma Get it Mason on the screen, Brian. Get it on the screen. This is this is Joey's heartthrob from the Purdue floor. I got it. Is this the? I'm, am I looking at the right guy? <laughs> Is it number zero? Maybe he's not as cute as I thought. Brian's like he's not that cute. I I don't. Yeah, yeah. That was the guy. I don't. I mean, maybe maybe it was like in his eyes. I don't know, Joey. I'm not going. Know. He to, looked good on the court. Yeah, I mean that's the most important part if you're going after a ball player, though. You know. Yep. <laughs> I can see that, Joey. Maybe. Uh, it just, Thanks. I'll be honest, I was expecting, like, when you're saying a guy's, like, pretty, and, like, I was, like, expecting, like, gorgeous, like, he could quit basketball and be an Instagram model, like, like, now. He's, he's, he's okay looking, but, you know, this, it's, maybe this it's is like that, over mine. the, uh, mugshot heartthrobs or whatever it was, where, where people put up, like, good looking people, yeah. mugshots. Yeah, mm, like, the, yeah. That, that's, that's kind of yeah. what it is for Joey there. He just sees this guy, he's like, oh, damn. Oh, yeah. look at that. He reminded me of like a cross between Blake Griffin and Steph Curry is what he looked like. Oh, he's just got that right mocha mocha feeling going, huh? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Mulatto butts. My, my favorite on those, it's like Shorty's doing time or whatever the hell it's called. And it's like shows this just gorgeous woman. And it's like um arrested for um for like pu public intox and you know assaulting a man or something. And like every comment in Bennett? Yeah, it's that's a bit of, and, and every <laughs> comment underneath it is like, I can fix her. <laughs> like every, like, Please give me a chance. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a Twitter? I think there's a Twitter account or maybe a Instagram account. I'm not sure. It's, it's called Mug Shotties. That's mm -hmm. it. Mug Shotties. Thank you. Mug that's Shotties. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'll see it like retweeted or liked on Instagram every once in a while. So. Um, before we lose the subject, I can fix her. I don't know why I found that so funny. 
this <laughs> playing at Oklahoma and at Oklahoma State. Uh, Clark, how you feeling about two, two and zero, oh, one and one? Where do you think him? Two and zero, oh, baby. Two, two and zero. Oh. I think so as well. Oklahoma. I think I think Oklahoma is an okay team. I don't think they got the home court that that uh, Gallagher Iba. That they've got some home court there, so that one will probably be the tougher if if with your younger yeah. raw team, but. As we're seeing fucking Bill Self pulling out another great coaching job where they look like they're going to be the Kansas we can knock down. And then we're, we're closing in on that home stretch. So it's about time for that Bill Self magic to really start working. And and (laughs) he's going to pull the fucking Georgia Bulldog football bullshit where no one believes in you. You're in second place. They never think that reigning national champions like we are could win. And then he's going to get grade A dick penetrating up the middle. And they're gonna fucking win the Big Twelve again and tear my heart out. So he, he's a shooter. He he doesn't really go for the penetration. Oh, I thought would, you'd call it. I th- I would think if if Dick was shooting, you'd just call it ejaculating or something. But you know that's just my inappropriate mind. So. I would say he penetrates towards the hoop and pulls it back out. Yeah. Ooh. And then, if, but, it. then but then if the hole's there again, he'll penetrate again. He'll, he'll well, keep I mean, penetrating. If it's there. <laughs> Is his favorite song uh, "My Dick" by Mickey Avalon? <laughs> that's that's your favorite song. <laughs> my dick, grade A beef. Your dick farts and queefs. My, my dick, my dick <laughs> plays forward for KU. My dick is <laughs> better than you. <laughs> oh shit! God, welcome it, to amateur you know, hour. Yeah, that's, that's true amateur hour. Amateur <laughs> rapping, amateur takes. Damn, we're good. That's right. <laughs> oh fuck! Anything else you guys want to talk about college basketball? I, I really only looked at our teams this week, to be honest. No, I'm glad you brought up the Gonzaga stuff because I hadn't even seen a game of theirs until they were on the TV before we started tonight. And uh, yeah. yeah, they're they're pretty bad. They're play, like playing old, playing old San Francisco. They won a couple championships in the 50s. Don't worry, right. they'll be a two seed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, two seed, and then we're going, how do they lose from the Sweet 16? Well, because they're shit. Who are the mm-hmm. uh, projected one seeds right now? I imagine one of them is Purdue. Purdue. Houston. Arizona? I mean, I let me. So. We, we have bracketology on this on the uh, agenda. Let me pull it up here. Or that's net ranking, as I guess. Um, I don't have the Joe, Joe Lenardi one. Probably, oh, ba- Alabama, dude. They're, they're 21 and 3. Um, I'm on it. Some other one, yeah. I mean, Arizona only has three losses. UCLA is nineteen and four. Um, Tennessee's nineteen Purdue, and five. Purdue, Go Alabama, Arizona, Houston. Yeah, yeah that, that didn't shock me. With Texas, so, Tennessee, UCLA, and Kansas as the two seeds. No love for okay. the St. Mary's Gales, who are twenty and four. I don't yeah. see them playing a real conference. Yeah. Uh, unless, so you're that, unless you're Gonzaga, unless you're Gonzaga. Let's say, have they played Gonzaga yet? Because they played. They them did. They twice. beat them last week. They beat them last week. Oh, really? Yep. Right, and they had them as a five seed at Saint, for St. Mary's. This is similar to when I would complain about SEC football earlier in the year. Does it piss you off when we had we have Big Twelve ranked matchups? You have Big Ten ranked matchups. And then primetime last Saturday night goes to unranked Duke versus unranked North Carolina. Yeah. Did it, like I don't, I don't, did anybody watch that? Anybody give a shit about that game? Nope. I didn't. I would say, so. again, like, I I am turning into the guy where I go, there has to be one top 24 or five team. If, I'm, if it's not Iowa State or a Big 12, I have to have a rooting interest in, like, one team that has to at least be a team that we're going to see in the tournament. And if it's two I, unranked teams, I just change it. Same with Duke I, in North Carolina now. I saw a picture from game day. I think – is Reese Davis on basketball game day as well? I think so. I think so, I think yeah. it, it was either Reese Davis or Joel Lenardi. I can't remember who the hell it was. But it was a kid holding a sign saying, I've been to game day four times. Can I get a picture with you? And, it's, and I just thought, that just means if this kid is in college and been to game day four times – Yep. You're going to that school too freaking much. Yeah. Go somewhere else. And also, that kid's a loser and he should graduate. Who takes more than four exactly. years to graduate college? It took me four and a half years. So, LOL, Joe, <laughs> on the inside here. 
but yeah, I think I I'm mean, going on 14 years or something like that. I haven't graduated yet. <laughs> took took me five. <laughs> that that degree coming in the mail pretty soon, Joey. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I think I got kicked out. Honorary yeah. doctorate. Yep. Honorary doctorate. Well, I don't know, man. I would say just remember though, like if, if no matter how Iowa State got, you know, minus or, minus or plus twelve on on foul discrepancy, however you want to look at it, at least our coach's name isn't Hubert, like North Carolina. Don't ever forget his name's Hubert. What a dweeb name, man. <laughs> what a dweeb name. And we beat their asses when they were number one. So so suck All on right. that car heels. Hubert. <laughs> yeah, Hubert. <laughs> Fucking nerd. All right. Uh, Joey, was there anything in college, in college wrestling, or do, do we should wrap a bow on it? Uh, we can wrap it up. I mean, it, basically everything held court in college wrestling. Uh, I do want to point out that watch the Iowa-Minnesota meet. Uh, it was not good. The Hawkeyes looked sluggish. I don't know if there's a sickness going around or what, but we'll, yeah. we'll see when it comes out because a lot okay. of the guys looked really, really slow and didn't move very well. Minnesota came to wrestle that night. So we'll see. But uh yeah, not a whole lot of movement anywhere. Uh Iowa State did drop one, eight. Right? Yeah. Yeah, they okay. won by four points or something like that. Iowa State dropped to eight. Yeah. Did they, did they lose? They must have lost. They must have last week. They dropped oh. to eight in the tournament rankings. They're still third in the dual meet rankings. So I don't know. Yeah. What but, when do uh conference championships take place for wrestling? So it would be – so the natties are the 16th through the 18th, so it would be like the first weekend in March. Sweet. Yeah, probably the weekend of the third or whatnot. Yeah, that's about it for uh, wrestling. I did put out another blog tonight for a preview for UFC 284, which is this weekend, and check out my other one from last week for the Bellator, Bellator 290 card that was free on CBS. Well, hell yeah, Joey. That's not amateur hour. Let's just uh, hit them with those socials then while you're at it. Where can they yep, find you? Can, you can find that on inthezone.studio tomorrow morning. Um, that's one of our partner websites. Um, and then also our regular socials are on Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram at Heartland Pulse. And then Facebook and YouTube, just search Pulse of the Heartland. Nice. Hell yeah. Well, again, we do appreciate everyone joining us live that's listening to us. Again, keep, keep sharing, subscribing. We're thinking about doing a little bit more of a debate listicle type one you know we did the i think everyone really loved the uh outbreak day one that we did a uh, couple days ago so i think we'll mm-hmm. kind, of, kind of continue that oh yeah so cool but all right appreciate everyone joining we'll catch you next week <laughs>